Well, nuclear power is making a comeback with plants in Michigan and Pennsylvania set to reopen to help fuel the AI boom. The energy transitions in focus, not just because of that data center boom and its need for electricity, but also because of the very different regulatory approaches of potential Trump and Harris administrations. Annika Shah has been researching all of these issues. He is global head of sustainability and transition strategy at Jefferies. Kind of a big scope, a yeah, big job a lot, a there, Annika. work to do, indeed. He, he is here with us here. in the studio. Great to see you in person. Um, so first, I want to get your reaction to some of these recent nuclear headlines, because, you know, for years there's been sort of talk that nuclear needed to play more of a role, but there wasn't really any movement, either yes. on the regulatory front. I mean, it's also very costly to reopen or build, almost impossible to build new nuclear plants. Yes. But it seems like AI is the thing that's finally making it happen. It's amazing. You know, I, I'm surprised that the world is surprised about this <laughs> moment. Uh, if you go back just nine months at the COP conference, the U.S. signed on to a pact to try to triple nuclear capacity over the next couple decades. If you look at the International Energy Agency's long-term forecast of what was needed to get to net zero, we knew we needed to double or triple global nuclear capacity. And at the same time, we knew that there was going to be increased power demand. This is nothing new. You know, this is why looking at the world from this energy transition perspective is really helpful. We all knew that we were going to have more power demand and that nuclear was going to play a role in this. So we've been writing about a nuclear renaissance for the past three years. I'm glad that the world has finally caught up to it. It's interesting that it's the AI story that's really catalyzing it. I'm fine with that. I'm, in fact, happy with it. But let's realize this has been long known in the energy transition world. And now we have to work itself out. And it has to work itself out. And it's going to have to happen quite quickly as opposed to with some planning. And that's mm. quite, quite tragic because it, in fact, takes many years to get an industry from dormancy to up and running. And now we're going to see that with what's happening with Three Mile Island and Microsoft, what we heard from Michigan earlier today. Um, and we'll see if it's possible. Well, how is it going to happen? Well, one thing that's going to happen is big tech is going to make it happen. That's they're just the, going to throw a lot of money at the They're going to throw a lot of money. <laughs> and you see even the, the early indication is that Microsoft is willing to pay a considerable premium for both firm power and clean power. Of course, remember, mm -hmm. Microsoft wouldn't be paying this if it just wanted firm power, because you could go down the path of natural gas. Right. But they want to stick to their climate commitments. So where do you get all this low carbon power? It's going to be nuclear, but at significant premium. We're seeing numbers at 100 to 120 dollars per megawatt hour. That's, a, that's, a, that's not nothing, right? So number one is big tech is going to make that happen. And we're also going to see big tech throw money into things like small modular reactors. We're seeing that already. Mm -hmm. We might even see uh, a big tech throw money into nuclear fusion. We hosted an entire conference on nuclear fusion, which sounds like a science project, but it's actually becoming a little bit more advanced than that. But the second area, this is very important for people to realize, is that there's bipartisan agreement around nuclear in this country. Right. You know, we hosted Senator Gillibrand here in New York uh, uh, on our platform at Jefferies six months ago, and she was talking about the benefits of nuclear energy. And if you went and listened to Donald Trump on the All In podcast with Chamath and David Sachs and the sort of tech crew, he was talking about being pro-nuclear. And there are very few things that Senator Gillibrand and Donald Trump yeah, agree on. Yeah. So all of this is to say that if you see what's happening in Washington with both parties coming together on nuclear, you see the Advance Act very specifically getting passed in a bipartisan basis just a few weeks ago to speed line nuclear approvals. Mm -hmm. The building blocks are coming together. Now the question is, can you actually get it done? Right. And getting it done is going to be hard. It's going to be long. In fact, the United States, we don't have the skills and the capacity to do this right now. So a whole industry needs to get formed and we get to see it in live time. Okay, so if I'm an investor and I'm saying, okay, I'm betting on the energy transition and I'm looking at nuclear in some plays there, although there's not that many publicly, I no. mean, there are some it's sort of secondary ways to get at it. I'm looking at solar, I'm looking at other energy sources. Nuclear is bipartisan, but as you say, we don't know if it's gonna work. And it's in the price, by the way, because right. those companies okay, have been so doing there you very, go. very well. Solar's a little more, maybe more binary, yep. depending on who wins in November. Like, how do you how do you weigh all these things? How do you figure out what's the best bet? 
We were at the RE Plus conference in Anaheim a few weeks ago on renewable energy with the focus on solar. There are 80,000 participants at that conference. It was like a circus. It was unbelievable. Solar is going to play a larger and larger role in the U.S. energy system for sure. The question is, do you make any money owning solar stocks? Right. That's a, and by the way, that's a completely different question. So solar may take off in the real economy. Owning the equities there may not be a good play for a whole bunch of reasons. I think as interest rates come down, by the way, owning uh, solar stocks will be a very good trade over the next six months to a year. I think in the short run, natural gas is the big winner in all of this, in this increased power demand, because we know how to do that. It can happen quite quickly. U.S. natural gas prices are quite low, and the U.S. is going to be a major center for AI and this whole power boom. So I think natural gas is a place to play it in the short term. In the medium to long run, I, I'm very interested in the carbon capture space. Mm. If natural gas remains a part of our ecosystem, then I think the climate commitments will also stay a part of our ecosystem. So you'll need carbon capture for those natural gas facilities. And there are many ways to play that in the public equity markets. Right. Um, and I think if you look longer out, I'm actually very interested in the carbon removal space. Look at Microsoft. Microsoft is making all of these announcements in nuclear. Microsoft's also making a lot of purchases of carbon removal credits. They are 62% of the carbon removal industries. Wow. One company wow. is Microsoft. Yeah. They're actually single-handedly building that industry almost in the United States. Again, hard to play it in the public markets, but there right. are companies mm -hmm. in like Climeworks, a direct mm -hmm. air capture company. There are companies like Heirloom also in that space. Right. There are biochar companies. There are all these businesses that are forming. We got to meet many of them during Climate Week. Yeah. So there's a lot happening in this space. It requires investors to A, follow policy, Look at what people have been saying about these things for many years so you won't miss out on the nuclear right. moment like right. our clients hopefully didn't miss <laughs> out it if they followed our work. Yes. But also look at the industries that are going to be formed because of this power boom. Try and get in. And try to get in when you can. Early on. Annika, we got to leave it there. As usual, I could talk to you for another 20 minutes. We got to leave it there. Thank you so much for being here. Thank Appreciate you. it.